Minecraft biology. It's a subject that not many people think of when they're playing a video game. But here on my channel, we do things a bit different. Instead of telling you how to build or how redstone works, mostly because I suck at those things, I am here to tell you about interesting questions about Minecraft that I either think of or ones that you all tell me. So if you want me to go into detail and discuss something about the lore, maybe a question, or really anything about Minecraft, then let me know in the comments. All right, we good? Okay, now. Minecraft biology. Let's start off with something simple. The plants in Minecraft. And well, there isn't just a few type of plants. There is actually quite a lot, and some have their own sets of rules they have to play by. But before I can get into that, I have to explain how flowers reproduce. So, basically, by the way, I'm summing this up a lot right here, and it's actually a lot more complicated than this. But a flower produces pollen, which then can be carried to the female part of a plant called a pistil, which in turn makes a seed. Now that's all fine and dandy, but what does Minecraft have to say about that? Well, in Minecraft, plants don't really reproduce. They do indeed have pollen, though. We know this because bees bring back pollen to their nest after being at a flower. But the only way flowers really produce is by bone meal. You see, bone meal is interesting because it acts like a super fertilizer for plants and is a dye. But it's not like real life bone meal. No, that is limited to real world behavior and you know, not magic. Minecraft bone meal can literally make trees grow instantly which proves that it's way more than a fertilizer. It also helps fungus grow. And speaking of fungus, let's talk about it. Not the overworld type though, because the only thing really notable about the overworld fungus is first, bone meal will grow mushrooms into taller mushrooms, obviously. And speaking of which, I want to highlight something real quick. Mycelium is interesting because brown mushrooms and red mushrooms can only be placed on it, implying that mycelium is like a base or hair-like structure for fungi filaments. Totally did not strip that off Google. But yeah, mycelium acts like soil for mushrooms. Anyways, now let's talk about the first thing you probably think of when you hear Minecraft fungus. The nether fungus. And of course, I'm talking about the fungi variants. Now I do indeed have a little question about it. Fungi can survive in heat. I mean it can. It's called thermophilic fungi, which can handle up to 45 degrees Celsius. But the problem is, the nether is 4,500 degrees according to google so it is beyond me how the fungus in the nether is living because the crimson and warp forest in all reality would be withering away if the concept of perspective was put into play it also just occurred to me that the two types of fungus in the nether crimson and warped are completely separate from one another the vines they grow on do not behave the same and you actually can't cross-breed the fungi with different nylium types. Nylium being what you can place the fungi on. Now let's get back to the overworld. I will briefly explain why I'm not talking about trees right now. This is because, yes, trees do indeed drop saplings, which can grow into trees again, but the exception is that the player has to plant these saplings, meaning the tree cannot just grow independently. It needs another party for reproduction. So if you think about it, we are basically bees for the trees in the game. Just like how bees move pollen from flowers, we can move the saplings to the ground to be planted. Also, before anyone mentions it, yes, I know that vines also grow with bone meal, but so does lichen, that like green glowy thing you see in caves, which just adds to my confusion because that means that lichen can grow on stone, but mushrooms can't, which is just weird because lichen is a fungi too. And yes, I'm aware that you can find mushrooms on stone and other blocks, but that's only on rare occasion, and we're focusing on what you can only plant them on. Let's cover chorus fruit real quick. Chorus fruit is weird. It's a fruit that's only ever found in the end dimension, but can grow in the overworld on endstone. So does that mean like endstone is a type of soil? I don't think so. So I looked a little bit deeper. It is my belief that chorus fruit isn't a fruit at all. Think about it. It's growing on a hard surface like stone with barely any nutrients. Not to mention that the end is obviously dark. So I'd rather think that chorus fruit is actually a fungus. So yeah, now you're probably wondering right now, what about the animals? Surely there's some biological interactions going on, right? And well, kinda. I can somewhat think of some biological occurrences that are happening, but there isn't that many. Like, yeah, this is a video game with mythical characters, but the real life mobs that actually have a real life counter just do not compare. For an example, pigs. All pigs can do that is biological in Minecraft is reproduce and turn into zombie pigmen, which yes, producing is biological, 
but the act of giving an animal a carrot and putting them in love mode and giving them a mate isn't really biological, at least the way Minecraft is portraying it. But there is some biological changes. Let's go over some. Here are some examples of some biological changes or transformations that happen in the real world. American Goldfinch. These birds can change color by what seeds they digest. Arctic Fox changes its color to white in the winter to blend in. Adult Butterfly changes dramatically, including growing wings over stages of its life. Chameleons changes color slowly to match environment. Eastern Newt changes color and regenerates limbs. There's a whole slew of animals that change or transform, most of these being color for obvious reasons like blending into the environment to either hide from predators or to hunt prey. A few being the Eastern Hellbender, Golden Tortoise Beetle, Achaea Ladybugs, Flamingos, Laysan Albatross, Mimic Octopus, Mimic Poison Dart Frog, Nudie Branch, Peacock Spider, Short-Tailed Weasel, Virginia Opossum, and the White Spotted Fish. As you can see, there is quite a few cool things about animals changing themselves, but that's in real life. Let's take a look at the Minecraft side of things. The only mobs I can think that transform or change is Axolotl, can change color from generations of offspring, Cats, offspring can change color from parent, Fox, changes color in snow bombs, Horse, Offspring changes color from parent. Mushroom, obviously an adaptation from cows. Along with, if they get struck by lightning, they can turn into a brown mushroom. Meaning, in heat, they adapt to a different species. Mule, you need a donkey and a horse to both enter love mode to have a mule. Parrot, can change color from parent. Rabbit, can also change color from parent. And the sheep, can transfuse the color of the wool from the parent sheep to the baby. There is also some more you can make an argument for, maybe the arthropods being included because there are spiders and they can make webs, but I won't spoil any. Thank you for watching this video if you made it this far. This one kind of took a little bit longer due to doing more research, but I hope you enjoyed. If you do have any more ways that Minecraft can relate to biology, then leave it down in the comments. I just recently quit my job, but I also have college starting up, so I may or may not start uploading more, but anyways. With all that being said, thank you for watching, and I'll catch y'all in the next one.